reasons why American breakfasts are the way they are. When we think of American breakfast food, images of cereal with milk, toast, eggs, pancakes, French toast, orange juice, coffee, or even McDonald's breakfast burrito come to mind. But not many people know the reasons why Americans eat these foods for breakfast. Today, we'll explore the factors that have shaped the American breakfast as we know it. Before cereals became popular in America, people used to have hearty breakfast similar to what they ate for dinner. However, they began experiencing frequent indigestion and health experts blamed heavy breakfasts. In the 1870s, there was a push for lighter and healthier breakfast options, which led to the invention of cereal. James Caleb Jackson created a product called granula, made from twice baked flour pebbles. However, there was a problem. Eating granula, as it was, could be tough on the teeth. To solve this, Jackson's mother, Lucretia Edgerton Jackson, came up with a brilliant idea. She recommended soaking the granula in milk or warm water to make it easier to eat and enjoy. Around the same time, a man named John Harvey Kellogg created his version of a cereal called granula. He made a small change to the name and called it granola. Kellogg's granola became popular and people enjoyed eating it by soaking it in milk or warm water. As time passed, cereals became softer and more convenient to eat on their own. However, even today, many people still like to pour milk over their cereal when having breakfast. In 1901, the cereal industry changed forever when Force Cereal introduced a mascot named Sonny Jim on their cereal box. At that time, having a mascot on cereal boxes was quite unusual, as people were not accustomed to characters like Captain Crunch or the Honey Smacks Frog. However, Sunny Jim became incredibly successful, and other cereal brands took notice, leading to the development of their own mascots. In the 1930s, the iconic cereal mascots like Snap, Crackle, and Pop, Tony the Tiger, Captain Crunch, and Toucan Sam were introduced and became just as successful, if not more so, than Sunny Jim. The popularity of cereal mascots got a significant boost in the 1960s with the introduction of color TVs in households across the country. Cereal companies use these charming characters complete with elaborate backstories and entertaining plots to market their cereals to kids, and it proved to be highly effective as a tactic. However, there was one problem. Many of the cereals marketed with cute cartoon mascots were loaded with sugar. Cereals like Super Sugar Crisp were coated with extra sugar to make them taste sweet. During the 1990s and early 2000s, public health organizations raised concerns about aggressive marketing targeting youngsters. In response, the Children's Television Act of 1990 limited the number of advertisements during kids' programming and in 2006, several major companies pledged to use their characters to promote healthier cereal options. While Sonny Jim may not be as well-known today, his impact on the cereal industry paved the way for the beloved mascots we recognize today. Despite some challenges with sugary cereals in the past, efforts have been made to provide healthier choices for kids, something that we hope Sonny Jim would be proud of, whoever he may be. Once upon a time, tea was the preferred breakfast beverage in America because of the British influence, as the U.S. started as British colonies. Both upper and middle class colonists enjoyed tea for its health benefits and as a social activity. However, things changed in 1765, when Britain imposed taxes on goods, including tea. Due to its strong association with British life, tea lost popularity and coffee became the new favorite morning drink in America. During the colonial times when Britain imposed taxes on goods like tea, some unhappy colonists protested, leading to the famous Boston Tea Party. Some even stopped drinking tea altogether and turned to alternative beverages like coffee. During the Civil War, coffee became increasingly popular among soldiers as it helped them stay alert and cope with the hardships of war more effectively than rum and brandy. This led to a higher demand for coffee, not just on the battlefield, but also in American households. Fast forward about 150 years, and today, Starbucks is a ubiquitous presence, with its mermaid logo seemingly wrapped in an American flag, symbolizing the widespread love for coffee in the United States. Humans have been eating bread for around 10,000 years. The Romans are credited with inventing toast to preserve stale bread. It became popular due to its irresistible crunch and remained a staple food over the centuries. In the 19th century, the Seventh-day Adventist Church promoted toast as a healthy, quick, and affordable breakfast, making it a common choice in America. The first electric toaster, the Eclipse Toaster, was introduced in 1893, but it could only toast one side at a time, making it less convenient. Finally, in 1919, automatic pop-up toasters were invented, making the toasting process much easier 
easier for people. In 1928, sliced bread was invented, making toast easily available all across America. Changes in the American work life during the early 20th century led to simpler and quicker breakfasts, and toast became a popular choice. But here's an interesting fact. French toast isn't actually French. Its origins can be traced back to an ancient Roman cookbook from the first century CE. Different versions of this dish appeared throughout Europe in the Middle Ages, and it was a clever way to use up stale bread without wasting it. The reason why it's called French toast is not entirely clear, as it used to be known by various names like German or Spanish toast. In a lighthearted manner, we could call it European wet bread in the United States. In the 1920s, a biochemist named Elmer McCollum sparked Americans' interest in vitamins and their healing properties. The company Sunkiss took advantage of this and started promoting canned orange juice as a rich source of vitamins and nutrients for a healthy diet. McCollum later introduced the concept of acidosis, claiming that too much acid in the bloodstream could cause fatigue. He recommended eating lettuce and citrus fruits, which are acidic, to prevent this condition. Sunkiss marketing team embraced the acidosis scare and heavily promoted orange juice even more. However, it was only after World War II that orange juice's popularity as a breakfast drink really took off. During the war, the government wanted to provide soldiers with vitamin C, so they asked scientists to develop a better version of canned orange juice. Bagels, in their simplest form, are round rolls with a hole in the center, and their origins can be traced all the way back to ancient Egypt. However, the bagel we know and love today, the perfect companion for fried eggs and cream cheese, can be attributed to 14th century Poland. And this was largely thanks to a company called Linder's, which marketed frozen bagels. Since then, bagels have become a cherished part of American food culture. Let's talk about the modern donut, widely believed to have originated in the 18th century when Dutch immigrants brought them to New York. At that time, they were called alakooks, or oily cakes, which doesn't sound as appetizing as the delicious breakfast treat we know today. The recipe evolved from there, and there's a story from the 19th century about a ship captain claiming to have created the familiar donut shape with a hole in the center, but this is debated among historians. What we do know is that during World War I, donuts became a symbol of American comfort and home, when volunteers in France gave them to American soldiers in the trenches. In 1920, a man named Adolf Levitt invented the first donut machine, making mass production possible. This turned donuts into a symbol of progress, and at the 1934 World's Fair, they were even seen as the food of the future. Donuts were affordable, just a nickel each, which made them accessible to almost everyone, especially those struggling during the Great Depression. By the 1950s, Krispy Kreme stores were widespread, and donuts became the quintessential American breakfast food. However, despite this widely accepted history, the origins of donuts are still debated. Fossilized versions of similar treats have been found in Native American settlements, which raises questions about the true history of donuts. Perhaps one day, we might even see donut skeletons displayed in natural history museums. So what do you think? Which of these breakfast foods do you eat to start your day? We hope you've enjoyed learning about the reasons why American breakfasts are the way they are. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and let us know what other food-related topics you would like us to cover.